Hey everybody, Kestova back with Foundation Design for Beginners, Part 2. Um, in the previous episode, we talked about um, a scenario where our, um, our vertical force, P, um, and our moment applied about the foundation uh, put us in the category of our eccentricity being less than or equal to L over 6. Um, of course, talking about method number two, uh, and as well as method number one, um, when our M over S is less than our P over A. Um, and if you don't recall, if you're kind of hazy from what we talked about last time and what that means, uh, please, I advise you to go back to my previous video um, to catch up and then come back to this one and we'll get into this one. So... Um, and this episode, we now have, like I said, um, what happens when our eccentricity is greater than L over 6, and what happens when our M over S is greater than P over A. So let's jump into it. Uh, we have, have the same foundation that we did in the previous example. Um, we've just changed the loading criteria. So this time, we now have 1,000 pound foot moment acting about the center of the footing. Um, we still have that 1,000 pound vertical force, um, but instead of 100 pound feet, we now have 1,000 pound feet, so 10 times the amount of moment being cranked into this footing. Um, over here, you can see we still have, it's still a 3 by 3 footing, um, L and B. You always want to make sure you distinguish those and clarify which ones you're going to use. Um, you could technically use them in each way. You can call this L and this B. You just need to track through the equations that I'm going to be showing you and make sure you apply um, the proper dimensions accordingly. Um, but pay attention as I call out L and B, that's and how the moment is being applied to the footing. So you see this dash here. It's almost like if you if this was like an open briefcase and now you're closing it with that being the spine of the briefcase, um, that's how the moment's being applied and that's directly corresponds to L and B. Um, we have so, like I said, a three by three footing, thousand pounds. Already making mistakes. Jeez, sloppy. We have a thousand pound foot. Don't even have proper units. All right. I know I'm sketchy today. Um, and then from last time, we have our S uh, of four point five um, feet cubed, cubic feet. Um, and that's just, if, I'll give you a brief second, that's broken down into this equation based on our geometry. So it's BD squared over 6, and that actually breaks down into terms of our variables. Capital B times L squared over 6 gets you 4.5. All right. So method 1. Last time, method 1, we want to find our bearing pressure on the bottom of our footing to make sure we're not um, going past our allowable bearing pressure of our soil. Otherwise, we're going to be pushing that. There's going to be so much load on this footing that's going to be pushing into the soil and uh, displacing the soil, and we're going to get failures and, and pretty big displacements if we do that. So we don't want that. Um, so everything's going to be calculated in the, uh, the pressure or the stress um, that the footing is exerting on the soil. So uh, we know that stress is force over an area. Uh, PSI, PSF, um, KSI, I mean, obviously there's a bunch of others, but you get the drift. Force over area. So we have method one, which is P over A plus or minus M over S. So when we go our um, max pressure or max bearing pressure or stress, do we focus here, is just P over A, a thousand over A is just the area of the bottom of the footing, so 3 times 3. Um, that's pounds over feet squared, so force over area. So you know you're good there. And then plus, so our max is always the plus. So max stress is plus M over S, so 1,000 over 4.5. Gets you 333 PSF. And again, pound feet over cubic feet. You cross out a foot and a foot, that gets you pound over feet squared, force over area. Good. All right, just remember that. Um, 
All right, so everything seems like it's fine. We're good. I, you wouldn't think that anything would be wrong here. Um, now we go with our minimum stress is P over A minus M over S. So same thing. Gets us negative 111 PSF. Well, that seems kind of strange. Um, we have a negative stress on the bottom of our footing. So you're like, okay, well, maybe that's just what it is because there's a big moment being cranked in here. So that, that makes sense. And I guess, okay, I got the right answer. Moving on. Well, that is going to be our red flag for method one. Once you have a negative stress for your minimum stress, you know that this method doesn't no longer applies because what's happening, if we go down to our diagrams, is for our first diagram, this is when P over A is greater than M over S, and you have a distribution of your force of your stresses on the bottom of your footing um, with this type of scenario, where your max stress is on this side, the side that your moment is being cranked into, and then your minimum is on the, the back side of the moment. So you're getting basically the entire footing is trying to overturn itself because of that moment. Um, but you're still good. You still have some force here. If that's This would be a positive number when P over A is greater than M over S. So these method one would still apply. When P over A equals M over S, it's the same thing. That footing is trying to turn over. Um, but you're you're just balanced, so you still have your max stress. And then on all the way at the end of the footing, perfectly at the end, you have your minimum stress just equal to zero PSF. Right at the tip of it, it just goes to zero. So the equations in method one still work out as well. It's when we cross into this P over A is less than M over S, which we have over here. This is like 111 PSF, and this is like 222 PSF. So M over S is greater than, sorry, I'll just write it for you. This is like 111 PSF, and this is like 222 PSF. So your M over S is greater than your P over A, which gets you into this scenario. So your uh, stress distribution or your, or your pressure distribution is now going away from the tip of that footing and is now leaving it. And actually what's happening is this portion of um, footing is, I guess you could try to imagine it as like lifting, but it's not lifting yet. If it were lifting, that means you'd be out of equilibrium with your statics. Um, so that's not what's happening, but what's happening is the soil is experiencing um, tensile forces and soil can't, it has no tensile capacity. So um, when something starts to lift up on soil, it's not like the soil is grabbing onto it and holding it down. Um, everything just bears on soil. Soil has zero tensile capacity. So this um, stress distribution of the soil starts to move inward and you start to load up heavier, more and more heavily on a smaller area of the footing. So that's what's happening here. So this max stress gets infinitely um, higher and higher and higher as you crank more and more moment or have the, your P over A and M over S more and more um, different from one another. And eventually you cross over to having way too much weight um, being loaded on just a small portion of the footing. And then that's crossing over your um, allowable soil pressure and your, your footing would then would not, would not work out. So with all that babbling done, when the one thing you need to take from this is when your, for method one, is when your minimum stress is negative, this method no longer applies. So we're just gonna, boom, boom. Doesn't, don't use any of these answers, doesn't apply anymore. Um, so now we will take, head over to method two. Uh, method two yesterday is based on um, checking your uh, eccentricity against some uh, variables, some preset predefined variables based on testing. Um, so what we have here, we know eccentricity is a distance. Um, so when we find eccentricity by taking our M over our P, which is a thousand over a thousand, 
Again, pound feet over pound. You cross out the pounds, just leaves you feet. That's a distance. So that's eccentricity. So we're good. That equals one foot. Um, you check it against you check your eccentricity against L over six. We knew that from previous. So L over six is three feet over six. And if we remember here, come back over. L is this dimension. All right. Moving on. That is L over six. It's three over six, which gets you a half a foot. So E, which is one foot, is greater than L over six. So we're in this new um, new criteria. The other thing you need to check for on the high bound, on high boundary for eccentricity, is L over two. So three over two equals 1.5 feet. You want to make sure that your E is less than L over two. If it's greater than L over two, you need to resize your footing. Your footing just will not work. There's too much moment. There's too much eccentricity. Um, and you, your footing is just improperly sized. So that's your high bound. Um, and honestly, a lot of the time in common practice, you want to stay within L over 6. Usually when you start to dump into this, this area, it gets a little... I mean, everything is still fine, but it just to help you sleep at night, a lot of engineers, when they're calculating a bunch of different footings for a huge project, you usually like to stay within L over 6, and most of the time that happens. But if not, it's it's very easy to just size up uh, the footing just slightly to get in that realm. But um, L over 3 is, is fine as well, too, as a high bound, but this is the maximum, L over 2. Um, so we know we're between them. So our new equation for max bearing pressure is 2P divided by 3 capital B E prime. E prime is L over 2 minus your eccentricity that you solved for above. That gets us 0 0.5 feet. We plug that back in for our E prime to get our max bearing pressure, which equals 444 PSF. So see, that's different than in method one. We got 333 PSF, so this is larger. Um, so we, I could go further into that, but I don't think you guys are, are ready for that yet. So, um, trust these equations. They work. Um, they've been proven through testing. Um, and basically it, it, it's derived from statics as well. When you really start to break down the bearing pressure, um, actually as I have over here, because really where this starts to stem from is that you have your P and you have your M. So that means your resulting force is like somewhere over here. And that distance is your E. And then the remaining force is E prime, because this is your point about which you're taking your moment. So, and then you have your equal and opposite in order for the statics to work out at the middle, th at the low third of your triangular distribution. So that's where you have that third comes in, and that's where in this equation you see this three. So again, I won't go any further into it, but that's that's really how it starts to break down. You guys can Google that and start to see where these equations come from and how they were derived. But um, always when you're in this scenario, Q min is zero PSF because again, we talked about how soil has no tensile capacity. So your minimum is just zero, which is over here. So um, zero PSF, and then we got 444 PSF on this side. Again, we talked usually commonly your allowable bearing pressure is like, sorry, I'm all over the place here, um, is like 2000 PSF. That's very common for design criteria that geotechnical engineers provide for a building site. So 440 PSF, we're well under 2,000. Um, usually there's a factor of safety slapped on there of two, um, sometimes three if they're really conservative, but two. So um, multiply this by two, that gets you whatever, 888 PSF, which is still under 2,000 PSF, so we're definitely good. Zero PSF, that's fine for your Q min. 
The only other thing is where is that? So where is this portion of the triangle? How, how scrunched does it get? Does it, because um, we knew when they were balanced before, your slope goes all the way to the other tip of the footing, but then as your M over S grows, this is what happens if you can see my pen start to change here. And it would keep going, keep going, keep going, what's happening here, and then it gets steeper and steeper, and it starts to max out. Um, so we want to know where is this Q min? That is defined by L prime, and that's the distance that it talks about. L prime is equal to, and this is an equation that I'm not going to derive for you, so trust me on it. Or never trust somebody on it, but Google it, get backup info, make sure that everything checks out, but it does. Um, you guys got to start to trust me here a little bit. We're, we're starting to get to uh, become a community, you know, have faith. L prime is equal to three over, uh, three times L over two minus E, our eccentricity E of one foot. That gets us 1.5 feet from um, your max bearing pressure. So 1.5 feet from here, which is actually the perfect center of the footing. Um, no coincidence there. It's not always there. It can be anywhere along the footing length. Um, but that is it for today. Uh, I know this was a little bit of a longer video, but uh, thanks for hanging in there. Um, a place that I really like to use, I have a couple different sources to do footing designs, and this is pretty much, um, again, this is just the beginning of it, but for basic footings, this is all you need to know. And a nice starting point that I like to use is this book, uh, especially for beginners, Structural Engineering Formulas. Uh, really, really good spot, and they have a great section in it. Again, always got my tabs in there. Um, they have a great spot with good diagrams that goes into footings. Everything that we just talked about, and more, actually. They get a little deeper into it. Um, I've applied some other notes here from, from previous times, but really, really good work here. Feel free to pause the video. If you want to take a screenshot, take all that down. That's really nice. But anyway, that's it. I won't bug you guys anymore. Um, yeah, until next time, let me know. Again, if anybody has any uh, homework questions, studying, needs studying help, or anything like that, always feel free to leave a comment. Um, and as always, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, I'm going to keep on bringing out new content uh, as much as I can. Uh, so I'd like to kind of tailor it to what you guys want rather than me just putting out what I think people want to see. But uh, I will until then. So until next time, thanks. See ya.